All right, this is going to be like a two-part video. At first, if you don't know, my name is Nick. I live in the Catskills. That's upstate New York. I do videos. I'm like working on the house, on the truck, in the shop, fly fishing, quick tip videos, that sort of stuff. If you like that, subscribe. I bet you'd be happy. The first part of this video is addressing some of the comments from that top 10 things you might hate video, Ram 2500. I'll link it in the description if you didn't watch it. Kind of controversial. First thing is, people think I hate the truck because I made that video. I do not hate the truck. I love the truck. It's in my top three vehicles of all time that I've owned, and I've owned a lot of vehicles. My wife and I moved into the house full time five years ago. We bought nine vehicles in five years, and I'm not talking eight drunkers in this one. I'm talking mostly brand new cars. We buy a lot of cars. That's just the way it is, And but I really found one that I love, and that's why I'm putting the money and the time into it. I wouldn't do that unless I love it. Let's put that aside. The next thing is everybody said I should have bought the Bighorn. The Bighorn wasn't for me. It uh, People are saying it would solve all my problems. It wouldn't solve all my problems. It would solve four problems, and those are not horrible issues. The, the first one, we'll go through all four, it's very simple. First one that I cannot solve aftermarket is the steering, steering wheel buttons. I mean, I could get a new head unit that has like a steering wheel controller attachment, but I'm not doing that. Uh, I'm keeping the head unit and steer on that getting a new steering wheel from a big horn. So put that aside. We don't care about that steering wheel buttons. The next thing it would have solved is a split back seat. That I'm thinking about doing. I'm trying to find a total that one. If I can, that would be nice because then I could get to the storage because a lot of times we go away and the baby seat will be back there. Then I could have storage under the seat and still get to it. Split back seat, I'll find it in a total that big horn. Probably cost me 600 bucks, let's say. I'm looking. The third thing it would have solved is underseat storage up front. Eh, not really a big deal. Uh, and I might be able to solve that. I gotta look and see if I can take out that middle part and get a new middle part if I wanted to, but I don't think I I don't think I'm going to. That's it doesn't seem worth it. And the fourth thing it would have solved is a soft open tailgate. But that's it, and it would have cost me four grand more for the same car. It's not worth it. And it also would have locked me out of certain things that it, well it since I bought this truck in transit, I didn't order it. If I was ordering, I definitely wouldn't want the big one. I didn't want the big one anyway, but I definitely would because I wouldn't have been able to order some of the things that I really wanted, which I, you, can't get the, you can't get the shifter on the floor. And uh, there's some other things you can't get that the tradesman, uh, the tradesman has. But either way, it doesn't matter. It wasn't the right truck for me. If it's the right truck for you and you want to spend the extra money to have those couple extra things and maybe have access to leather and you want to spend even more money. You want that big horn emblem on the tailgate. A lot of people like to do that. That's not me. I've worked in construction 20 years and obviously I'm not construction anymore. I own a software company. It's completely different. But I'm, I'm a base model guy. I like to drive a base model to the job site and not care. And really just not care and know that it's capable. Know that it has the most payload that it can, that it can have. Know that it can tow the most the, out of any of the, uh, of the trim values. I like that, and that's the type of person I am. I'm not like a Laramie guy. That's not me. Maybe in the future we'll see, but I, right now, really, that's not me. It's, I stopped working in construction in 2013, April 16, 2013, and it's still in me, honestly. That's why I do these type of videos, because it's like a passion, like a hobby of fixing things, and that's what I like. So. Should not have bought a big horn. It was the, wasn't the right choice. I'd rather take that money and put it into stuff that makes the truck more capable. Um, and I can still get things to solve those problems. For instance, soft open tailgate. That's what we're gonna do today. Uh, Dan Beers, that's who commented, and, and one other person too, about how you can get a soft open tailgate. Now, Here's the interesting thing is, is that I couldn't find any aftermarket ones that absolutely specifically said it would work on the 2021. Maybe it would have, but the point is, is actually a lot of those aftermarket ones are a strut on the inside, which I don't like. I don't want a strut on the inside. I don't want to be able to, I don't want to hit it on something. I don't, I don't want that. But a couple people, specifically Dan Beers, mentioned the OEM one. And I was like, whoa. And then somebody linked me to a part number. I bought it, 40 bucks shipped. And Dan Beers is actually the one who really helped me find out where to put it in. Because here's the problem, and this is why I'm making the videos, is that all the videos you see about the OEM one, it's on this side. It's on the driver's side. 
and there'll be like a like a, a knob here at the hinge and an L bracket with the other knob that you connect the strut to. Not on a 2021 and probably not on a 2022. It's on this side and the knob is here, but the other one is in the fender. I didn't know that. Dan was like, hey, let me, let me, he took apart his car to look again and he said, yeah, it's in the fender. I went back there, trying to light him, boom, there it was. Let's get started, we'll put it in, 40 bucks shipped to solve one of my problems. Hmm, right, that's, that's pretty good. All right, let's go. This is about as easy as it gets. Uh, you need a T25. I have an impact. There's two T25s here. And then there's a couple little hooks. You gotta slide it towards the back of the car. You gotta give it a good yank. And then, for simplicity's sake, we're going to undo this little clip. We push the red latch, and then we push it down, and then it comes right out. All right, I have you set up here. I think this is going to be a good view. It's actually really going to show how difficult it is to find this thing. Here's the first one. You see it right there. Simple. Well, the other one was supposed to be up here somewhere. It was an L bracket with a, with a little knob attached. If you have a 2020 or a 2020, uh, 2019, that's where you're going to find it. But in this one, I opened this up again and I just saw that. And I was like, what in the world? And he said it was way down deep in there. Dan Beers is his name. So I said, all right, let me get a flashlight. There it is. And I might be saying, how in the world are you going to get in here? You can't. Well, I, with, with my hand size, there's no way I can get in there. But there's access from underneath. It doesn't look like it, but there is access from underneath. I'll show you where it is. All right, I got you on my phone because it's easier passenger side you go right underneath this fender you look in this little hole right here and there it is you can see it right there now if you don't know how these things work it's pretty simple this little piece right here you just got to pry this out you can see it it's, it pops out very easy a flathead will do it hopefully you're in focus i put my hand here and this thing will probably go flying Taking it off is easy. Putting it back on, not, not really as easy. Okay, well, it's gonna be very difficult for you to see this, but I have the bottom installed, and I'm gonna give you a little tip on, on these, is that put the clip halfway in. Don't try and push the, it onto the knob, then try and push the clip on. It just won't go. Get the clip on halfway, I'll show you a little close up of how I do it, and then put it on, the knob and then just push the clip down. It's gonna, it's, it's gonna make things a lot easier. Now, after you get this on, one thing I'll also say about this is that you gotta have the dampener about half, it's gotta be closed basically almost all the way to get it in. And then you're gonna wanna come in here with, I would say, a needle nose plier or something and open it up. Ugh. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm slowly opening it up until yeah so now i just slipped it on there now in this particular case it's a little bit easier to to um to put the clip on and you're probably not going to be able to see me do this but i'm opening I, i'm bending it just a little bit and you can see that there's some some grooves right here well that's so that you could put it on halfway and then you're just going to slide it over you see that how it's basically on but I know above where it needs to be and then you're gonna slide it down and push it in. And double check it it's locked and let's get my other light out of there <clears throat> all right put the tail light back on and I checked this obviously before I'm doing it right now and it works great and I'll explain how it works Right about here is when it starts. And uh, the, if you give it the drop test here, that's really what it's doing. It's, it's, it's preventing a drop from happening. It's not soft open like starting from here. It just goes, because that, be, that, be, that would be bad. Because 
You open up that tailgate, you want to get in that truck. You're not looking for this. <laughs> You're not looking for a motorized down tailgate. You're looking to drop it and it not slam. That's, that's, this is, this is the way it should be. This is, this is smart right here. So, should have bought a big horn, right? <laughs> 40 bucks. Dampened, dampened tailgate, soft open tailgate, I guess you want to call it that, but uh, we got there in the end for 40 bucks with a little help from Dan Beers, who I really appreciate sticking with me in the comments. And that's it. Again, I will leave a link to this part in the description. I highly suggest if you have a tradesman, order it. If you have a 2021, it's in here. One piece is way down in the fender. If you have something like a 20 or a 19, and maybe even before that, that don't quote me on that, but at least a 20 and a 19, it's on the other side. It's a lot easier to do the job when it's on that side, but I'm wondering if they switched it because this side, the way they have this set up works better. I don't know. I really don't know exactly why they changed it. There has to be a reason though. I mean, weight, could that really be a possibility that they changed the sides because of weight? Sounds kind of stupid, but there's a possibility. Uh, but they must have changed the location, the second location in the f to the fender because it works better. That's the only thing I could think about. That's the only thing I could think of. All right. Thanks, everyone.